Thanks very much, Susan. So, yeah, I thought I'd start things off by sharing a little bit about my background. So, I started uh, as a software engineer building uh, large custom uh, systems for enterprises. And even in those days, I was always interested in not just the application development, but everything it took to put a software system together from uh, security and databases and messaging, the build and deployment process, and probably what you would refer to as a, a full stack developer these days, but you know, well before it was such a thing. And I was often frustrated by how long it would take uh, to get software delivered, um, deployed and released uh, to users. It would sometimes take months or even years uh, to get the software out to users. And I, so I started getting interested in practices like uh, the daily build, and that led to things like continuous integration, which led me to write a book on, on the topic in 2007. And it was around that same time um, that the book was published that I also co-founded a company called Stelligent. And Stelligent um, was really founded on the idea of helping companies deliver, be, uh, giving them the capability to deliver features to users whenever they choose to do so. Uh, using practices like continuous integration, continuous delivery, um, and, and DevOps practices in general. And a couple of years ago, I was recognized as AWS Community Hero, which is really um, uh, a reflection of one of the core values at Stelligent that we have, um, and that is of sharing. And so we share through webinars like this, through, if you go to our blog, you will see a lot of very solution-oriented technical um, uh, blog articles and examples. Um, and then um, we have a number of open source contributions you can find on GitHub as well at the Stelgen organization. So I'm gonna be talking today about next generation MSPs or managed service providers and how they're providing the, the capability through self-service means, which is, I'm gonna really compare it to what a traditional MSP might typically offer. Uh, to customers. Um, and that, in terms of the next generation, what we're seeing is more, uh, the MSPs are providing more freedom uh, for uh, development organizations. They're providing that freedom along with governance, along with the guardrails, to, so that uh, software developers can deploy with confidence um, uh, to their users. And so, let's take a look at, well, why do companies choose MSPs in the first place? And if you look in the past, um, companies may have sought to outsource their IT capabilities because they may have lacked the expertise in-house um, or as a result of, of cost and availability of, of that expertise. Um, and then some of the companies will look to the MSP to reduce the burden on managing their, their own IT infrastructure so they can focus on what they have seen as their core competency um, of their business and let someone else kind of manage the IT infrastructure. And that's, that's how you see uh, traditional MSPs um, solving uh, the problem. Now, over the past decade, things have changed quite a bit. And, and this is really as a result of the ubiquity and the capabilities that are afforded by cloud providers like Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure and, um, and, and the Google uh, Cloud Platform. And as a result of these cloud providers, you, um, companies can actually experience the same scale and security as the biggest organizations out there. They're going to get the same kind of compute, but they're only um, paying for what they're using. And this provides a lot of freedom um, for even the smallest company to scale um, and have the same level of security and things like that as the largest organization out there. Now, while the access to infrastructure has become ubiquitous, uh, access to the expertise is not. Um, in fact, the gulf in expertise is widening as those who embrace the cloud early on have a very distinct advantage to innovate based on the skills that they've established using providers such as AWS and Microsoft and Google um, over the past uh, several years. So let's take a look at what, do, what is the typical um, a, let's say traditional MSP or what's, the, uh, what's an MSP uh, tend to provide? And so um, I'm going to go over these nine areas, the, the first being access management. And that's uh, where an MSP might be uh, creating user accounts and managing user accounts and providing permissions 
uh, to infrastructure resources. And then change management, we're going to ensure that changes are implied uh, in a controlled manner. Or compliance management, where they're going to ensure that the infrastructure and the applications are in compliance with assurance programs for finance and healthcare and government and other uh, types of assurance programs. Um, and then continuity management, you know, things like disaster recovery and backups and high availability and restoration. Um, or incident management, where um, you're able to get support to fix problems, you have alert alerting, monitoring, uh, things like that, that are um, helping customers be aware when something uh, does go wrong and then uh, getting support to fix that. And then patch management, where the, uh, the infrastructure is always kept up to date and also compliant. And then provisioning management, where you're provisioning, uh, the MSP is provisioning, configuring um, infrastructure for its customers. And then reporting where you're getting access to things like metrics and logs and, and recommendations for improvement. And then finally, security management where you're ensuring that the infrastructure is, is always secure. So I'm gonna be going over seven guiding practices and that's, this is really the, the outline for the rest of the webinar. Um, and the first is uh, DevOps. And I'll be spending a good bit of time talking about DevOps. And so these, the next generation of service providers are embracing more of a, a product-driven mindset uh, that's considering the entire value stream from idea to production um, and its ongoing operations, and it's working with its customers uh, to ensure that they're also embracing the DevOps model. Um, and then that, that they're cloud native. And, the next generation service providers are leveraging the capabilities um, of the individual uh, cloud providers. They're also pro providing remediation as code. So any problems that occur get fixed via uh, version tested code. They're, they're providing access to the code. So then the next generation service providers are providing customers access to all the code that creates their, the uh, IT infrastructure, the IT systems. They're, upskilling their customers. In other words, they're uh, increasing the knowledge and capability of the engineers and the rest of the organization um, in which they're providing the service uh, to. And then they're providing that in a self-service manner. Um, and I would say that the distinct difference is they're looking at it from the perspective of enabling, and that's also related to increasing the knowledge and capability of their customers. So instead of looking at it um, as, you know, managing and providing a service only. It's also about um, enabling customers and engineers to be able to solve their own um, problems as they arise. And then finally, governance is providing governance around these, um, these frameworks and providing rules and policies. In particular, they're enabled um, via automated systems that's, that are defined as code rather than just boards and rules and things like that that people are supposedly follow. And so that's what I'll be going over in the rest of the, um, the webinar in, in more detail. So first one being embracing DevOps. And DevOps is really about driving any efficiency in the software development lifecycle in order to speed up feedback loops between engineers and, uh, and customers. If you look at the traditional <clears throat> MSP service model, it's essentially the antithesis of DevOps. And traditional MSPs tend to erect walls between themselves um, and their customers. And the, the essence of DevOps is more of a, as I mentioned, a, more of a product-driven mindset in which teams are responsible um, for the entire life of the product, including building, testing, deploying, running, and supporting the systems they develop. Um, and when, when software development teams offload that responsibility for running and supporting these systems to another team uh, that might have different priorities, like a traditional MSP, it really misses the point of DevOps. And um, so I'll go with that in a bit more detail. And so at um, AWS reInvent 2017, which is the worldwide um, AWS conference that's held in Las Vegas every year, um, this was just held a couple months ago, the CEO of AWS, Andy Jassy, he actually quoted the, 